Hello and welcome to Getting Your Money's Worth, the show that focuses on value. I'm Judith West and our guest today is Donna Taylor, principal of the Brooklyn School of Inquiry, uh, an intermediate, uh, no, well, I'm going to say K through what, you'll correct me, um, school in Brooklyn. The first such of your kind outside of New York City, right? Outside of Manhattan. Outside of Manhattan. The first in right. Brooklyn. Okay. Um, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having okay. me. Um, so tell me something. Let's go slow. Let's get started. You have an unusual background to be principal. You don't fit the you don't fit the the uh, the mold. You come out of the business world, right? I do. Yeah. Um, and you've taught some, and now you're principal. Um, tell me, has that how has that business world experience formulated your role as principal? Well, as I tell my 17-year-old, sometimes understanding what you don't want to do in life can be every bit as informative as to what you want to do. Um, I had a terrific time in publishing for 20 years, but as my children began to get older and I got very involved in their schools, I got the sense that I would be much more useful with my productivity and efficiency and you know, creativity in schools, right. working for kids. So uh, so, but did you bring a different kind of attitude about education or a different kind of style to get the job done? Well, I would have to say that I, I have a, a real fire in my belly about education because of my experience out in the world and having a very clear sense that our future is really in the hands of, of children. And so in order to really give them by working, especially in leadership positions at both Time and Bertelsmann, by, by working in the inner circle, you realize what, what is missing a little bit right. out there. You know, um, uh, there's a lot of folks that are talking about the fact that this country is failing to develop its human capital uh, as we have in the past. And a lot of finger pointing at education. Um, your school is a magnet school, so you're trying to do things in a in, in a in a in a different kind of way. Um, what what is what, do you feel the same way that there's that there seems to always be something missing now in education? Well, I wouldn't generalize about something missing in education. I think there's a really strong education reform movement throughout the country. And I think New York City is doing a tremendous amount to address what have been some of the challenges that we've faced both citywide and nationally. So, and we're not, we're not so much a magnet school as we're a citywide gifted and talented school, which simply means that... Well, yeah, what does that mean? It means that the children have to test in, and there's a process. It's not a school where you live in a certain neighborhood and you are, you are zoned. So they do, they do have to qualify with some kind of standardized test. Yes. yes. What, is, does that, what does that mean, all this, about, this, all this uh, hoopla that we're hearing about? So much testing, standardized, da-da-da-da-da, not fair. What's your point of view? What's my point of view about testing? Yeah. Well... Whether or not, I, I don't have anything to say about qualifying to get into the school, right. but I don't think that testing and test scores are indicative of how well children are doing in school. Do you have a diverse population in your we school? We absolutely do. We absolutely do. We, we have 110 students, 10% of which are African American, 7% of which are Latino, 8% of which are Asian. We do. You know, so, um, I have read, and it's been validated, that by 2020, the expectation is that in this country, over half of all public school children will be minority or poverty background. Uh, and those are typically the kind of kids that come in less prepared. That's, that's true. Does your school, what are, you, what, are, what are you doing in your school about that? Well, we don't really... You don't really have that? We don't have that, that same demographic because, because in order to get into the school, children have already to test yeah. in a certain percentile. Right. So other, other schools, though, that have that, they, they're struggling, aren't they, Donna? Well, they are struggling, but there's all sorts of pedagogy that addresses struggling children. And even some of the pedagogy, lots of the pedagogy that's grown out of the... Pedagogy being curriculum? Being teaching methodologies, teaching okay. practices. It's just teaching styles. Teaching, not so much styles, but con content, style, uh, lots of effective 
teaching styles, teaching content, teaching practices that have proven effective for struggling children have grown out of the gifted pedagogy. So is there a transfer? Is there a transfer? What do you mean? Well, I mean, if teachers, if there's a certain pedagogy or a certain methodology that works in uh, the gift with the gifted, has that then been franchised or transferred to the to public schools in it's general? A, it's a mat. Y yes, I mean, I would say by and large, lots of the practices, best practices that have come out of research and that are used in gifted situations in gifted classrooms are being practiced in general ed classrooms and special ed classrooms, uh, differentiation, small group instruction. Um, but it's a matter of coaching. You know, 60% of the teachers in 60% of the third and fourth grade teachers in this country have never had that kind of training, gifted training. They don't, and when I say gifted training, I mean the ability to compact curriculum, the ability to accelerate, which is proven, you know, research shows is effective for all kids, not is just gifted kids. Is that a skill kids. that you learn in school, or is that a skill that you learn in practice? Uh, it's both in school, in practice, in research. Uh, you know, teachers, in, you know, in really highly effective schools have training all the time and coaching all the time. Is that what goes on in your school? Oh, yes. We have a lot of professional development. We watch one another. We model. I go in and model lessons. We have a literacy staff person who comes in from the outside, and we're constantly learning from the research that's out there, from our own children, what works best with them. Right. right. Uh, the, um, it's been said that the most effective um, uh, variable, I suppose, in the classroom is the quality of the teacher. It's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. The quality of the teacher. So is it, is it a different kind of teacher that teaches gifted kids? It's a teacher who is trained to teach gifted What's children. What's different about it? I really would like to know. Well, when I said about accelerated and compacted curriculum, gifted children have the ability to do just as well um, content-wise with learning with moving at either a faster pace oh. or skipping over material that I they've see. already mastered. Oh, I, and I in fact, it. lots of gifted kids who underachieve are simply bored because their teacher is not really trained. It's more, they're getting more of a rote or blackboard, yeah, you know, yeah, or something. Yeah, and you know. they're sort of sitting around waiting for something Something exciting to happen, to happen. something new to happen. Sure, sure. Right. Right. But that takes a lot of work to be able, is that, is, that what's, is that what's meant by individualized instruction? It is. It's teaching is probably one of the hardest jobs. It is. That you could ever do in your life. Well, Teachers work. You worked, you worked in the hard, you know, the business world is supposed to be tough and gritty, but you say teaching is plenty hard. Oh, it's plenty hard and it's continual. It's not, you don't, your day often begins after the children go right. because you look at student work and you evaluate where, they're, right. where they are, where you want to take them, how you might take them there. Okay. You know, um, I, I have a daughter who's a lawyer. She's an author of young adult books, and she feels like she'd like to maybe sort of like you, you know, give back and go back into the schools. But she doesn't have any education credits. Would you hire someone like that? Well, you can't. You can't. You can't as a teacher. That, right. But, you know, very That's quickly. That's what I'm saying. Is that, something that, is that something that ought to be changed a little? Oh, you, I can't tell you how much I learned from both getting my master's in education. Really? And, well, for me, I also was sort of fast-tracked because after teaching for five years, I went to the Leadership Academy, which right. is a... Different a, art. A, a, it's a de Department of Education program that fast-tracks teachers to become principals. And what's so valuable is understanding what you learn to, when you get your education credits is you read research. You learn what's effective. You learn why it's effective. You learn how it's effective. Um, and so... I, I wanted to be a teacher. I had no credentials whatsoever after coming out of Time, Inc. as a vice president, so I had to go get my master's. But very quickly, you can accrue enough credits where you can be initially certified, and, and pretty it's quickly... It's a pretty fast track. It, 
especially for someone like your daughter. Yeah. Well, I mean, someone, I mean, personally, but I was just curious but, because... But, but for someone who feels yeah, so strongly yeah, and wants to do I, it. Um, you know, there's a whole group of people, not just me, lots of folks that think that the business model should be applied to education, that there ought to be uh, uh, some relationship between money spent and, and product produced, and there ought to be some hard, you know, uh, accountability. And lots of folks think that, you know, uh, if the bottom line is important in every industry on the planet, why shouldn't it be important in education? Well, it, it is, and there are tremendous accountability structures in place, although... There's a question about equity all yes, the time. All the time. All the time. All, all the, the time. time. But the, I think the reform movement has taken off. It's, it's not going to be stifled anymore. Oh, I think it took off 20 years ago. You're just hearing more and more about it, and it's very well and alive in New York City. Yes, particularly in New York City. Yeah. Uh, tell me something. Let's go back to your home ground, Brooklyn School of Inquiry. That's an unusual name. What does that mean? Uh, it's about, you know, children learning through curiosity. That's probably one of the strongest ways for kids to learn so something content, through their own interests. So content, the, is the content then manipulated in some way to be interactive or manipulated to be, how do you, how do you get the contact, content to match the curiosity? Well, you have centers in a kindergarten room where you somebody, one of the children might really like dinosaurs. So you might want to read dinosaur books and you I might see. want to write about dinosaurs and you might want to play with dinosaurs during center time. It's through its inquiry base, interest base, curiosity base, because that's contextually where kids, it's more motivating, it's incentivizing. Is teaching entrepreneurial in nature? Oh, f for me, I think it is entirely. It's, uh, I think that's an interesting word to use. I've been thinking about it all day. Right, yeah. You know, there's a certain, um, there's a certain passion and a certain um, uh, individualism. What's entrepreneurial about it is that for every child, you really have to create and invent some way to hook them and reach them. Because not all learners are the same. Some learners learn by listening, some learn by touching, some learn by experiencing and doing. So, yeah. Uh, you also, we only have, we have very short time, but you also uh, felt, as I, I remember reading about you as a parent, that there should be more involvement of parents. Do you still, now that you're there and involved with parents, do you still believe that? I do. And, and at our school, the, the parent connection is vital and rigorous and fabulous and without the parents you know kids are gonna research shows that kids do much better when they know their parents are involved and I love parent involvement and I'm very grateful for it. Yeah, yeah. Well I think that Brooklyn is very lucky to have you as oh, a principal thanks. and lucky to have the school and I know that just last, yeah, last night you went from acting to authentic principal. And uh, I think that uh, Brooklyn got a very good deal. Thanks very Th much. Thanks. I like to, I like to hear about your school. I w can I come visit? Oh, we would love to have yeah, you. I'd Absolutely. Like to, I'd like yeah. to. Uh, thanks for being on the show. You're watching Getting Your Money's Worth. I'm Judith West. And our guest was Donna Taylor, principal of Brooklyn School of Inquiry. I think we all got a good education. Thanks for watching.